Hello. This is our catapult. So as you can see here, we have a long rod made out of aluminum with about a three to one ratio. And we are powering this device with garage door springs. And so these springs are very heavy. It takes about 130 pounds to move them one inch. So we're expecting this to launch our buddy Tim really far. Yep, this thing is very powerful. It's taken us quite a bit of time to build it. We've gone through quite a few revisions, perhaps like five, because the problem we were facing was every time we launched something, some part of our contraption would break. The first time we were running into trouble with the base itself because there's so much torque exerted when the rod stops moving that it caused this whole front piece to move forward and crack. So we had to implement these big support beams to help absorb that force if it's stopping. And then most recently, we've run into a problem with the bar itself. Originally we were using pine wood, and that pine wood would snap as soon as it stopped because there was so much force and so much torque exerted on that pine wood. And it's very weak wood, so it just cracked instantly. And now we're ready to go test it. We've attached an accelerometer to measure the angular speed of our catapult as it goes through its motion. We also have our little astronaut, Tim, weighing in at a whopping 297 grams. How you feeling for this launch today, Tim? <laughs> and we're out here in beautiful Hemet, California. See how far down this path we can launch everything. So Tanner, talk to me about this graph that you have right here. What we have here is an accelerometer mounted to the catapult. This accelerometer is going to be transmitting every 20 milliseconds what the angular speed of this catapult is. And so we're going to register that on the Arduino and we're going to save that data on the computer for later. So this is what the graph actually looks like. So right now you can see there's nothing, but if I move it, you can see the speed changes. And so what we've done is we've tightened the springs a little bit more, so we should get a little bit more torque on the rod since the last time we showed you the contraption. Now let's launch Tim the Beaver. Three, two, one. Whoa. in five, four, three, two, one. One hundred grams in five, four, three, two, one. Now after finishing the catapult and successfully launching it, we wanted to see if we could correctly predict the results that we observed in the catapult. And doing so meant we needed to get some measurements and do some math. The first step in simulating this catapult was to calculate a few things. First of all, we had to calculate the moment of inertia of the catapult arm. The moment of inertia can be calculated by finding the moment of inertia of each part of the system in relation to the center pivot point and adding them all together. For example, the moment of inertia of a single rod is 1 12th times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. The final moment of inertia of the arm is 3.5224 kilograms meters squared. This does not include the moment of inertia of the projectile, but this is accounted for in the code. Now we need to calculate the spring constant of the garage door springs. To do that, we hung a car battery of 23.5 pounds from the spring and measured how far it stretched. In our case, that was 1.875 inches, which means the spring constant of this spring is 2,176. Now to accurately simulate this catapult, we needed to calculate the torque that this spring was exerting on the catapult. Now this is not an easy problem because the torque that the spring exerts changes over time as the catapult moves in position. When the catapult is in the horizontal position, it's exerting a different torque than when it's in this position. That's because as the length of the spring changes, it exerts a different force 
on here and it exerts a different force at a different angle. And the torque is defined as the force and the cross product of the angle that force is exerted at. To solve this problem, we would need to use a bit of computer code and a bit of math. So this is the equation that we came up with. It solves for the torque that the spring exerts on this catapult depending on this angle right here. And this equation only applies when this angle is less than 90 degrees. The equations down here were formulated to solve for the answer when it's both below 90 degrees and above 90 degrees. Now because the acceleration of this catapult changes over time, a simple mathematical equation was not sufficient to solve this problem. We would need to have a piece of computer code that uses something called a forward Euler's method to simulate the catapult. What happens is our equations left us with a problem to solve. Our problem being that we're given initial values and we have to find how those values change over time. So a way that we did this was by using the forward Euler method, which basically takes your current state and then adds the change in whatever variable you're finding multiplied by a time step. So in this case, this is an arbitrary graph. We're given a sub zero, and then from a sub zero, we want to calculate another value. And so we have our a sub zero. So we add a sub zero, which is our current state, plus the change in time, which is the x distance between a sub zero and a sub one, multiplied by the slope at the a sub zero point to then find our value at a sub one. And this value is repeated to find an approximation of the curve as you see above. And so we use the same principle in our Python code to find how drag affected our trajectory of our projectile. This program is split into two different parts. The first part consists of this bit of output plus this graph, and it's able to calculate the acceleration of this catapult over time, as well as the torque that the spring is pulling on the catapult, as well as the speed over time. It's able to give the total firing time in seconds, the final angular velocity, and the final tangential velocity of the projectile when it leaves the catapult. In the first part, we have a couple functions that calculate things. This function consists of those two mathematical functions that we just looked at. You input the current angle of the catapult, and it will return the current torque that the spring is exerting on the catapult. This gravitational torque function also does the same thing, but with the torque of gravity. And this moment of inertia function returns the moment of inertia, given the moment of inertia of the arm plus the moment of inertia of the projectile. These initial values, as well as this while loop, consist of the forward Euler simulation. Given the current angular position of the catapult, it'll calculate the current angular acceleration. And given the small time step that we're using of 0 0.0001 seconds, it'll calculate the new angular position and angular velocity after that time. Using those two values, it'll be able to calculate a new angular acceleration, therefore a new angular position and angular velocity. And it will do that until the catapult reaches its final launching position. So the second part of the code was used to find the trajectory, meaning the x distance covered by our projectile. We wanted to find how far away it landed from the catapult. And we also wanted to find the time that it takes to hit the ground. And so we wanted to get the actual landing position away from the catapult um, and the actual travel time in a value that applies to the real world. It's crazy how the actual travel distance of 105 feet for the 308 gram weight matched very well the predicted uh, travel position of the weight of 106 feet. That's crazy. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.